If you own one of these, you know they can be pretty loud. But how about we make them shut up? With a tiny yellow box and just a few lines of code, we can make that thing quite a bit less annoying. Now that's better. Now let's take a closer look of what's inside. It's actually just an Arduino microcontroller for a few bucks and two ready-made relay shields that are meant for another microcontroller. But the advantage of those is they already have an LED included and also they have a flyback diode, which I'll explain later why that is necessary. Now the way this works is pretty simple. You have these two connectors, which are basically the 5 volt power supply for the Arduino. And then you have this connector, which is the 24 volts for the laser. As soon as the laser starts, it goes to zero, so zero voltage or grounded. And then the Arduino knows to start those two relays. The only thing is those 24 volts would grill the general purpose I.O. pins of the Arduino. So we need this diode so that power can only flow from the Arduino to the grounded connector of the laser and not the other way around. Otherwise, the 24 volts would kill the Arduino. And as soon as the laser is started, the Arduino gets a signal and starts the fan and the air assist, but only for the time duration we have set in the configuration. You can see the yellow wire is the one connecting to the diode directly from the laser as an input button for the Arduino, and the blue and green lines are to control the relays. Now the black wiring, of course, is just the general grounding for all the components, and the red wire is the permanent 5 volt power connection for the shields and the wires connected down here directly to the shields are actually just the power for the solenoid and the wiring of the fan that's sitting behind. And that's actually all you need to control your laser's fan and a solenoid for the air assist. Now let's take a deeper look of how this works. These are the schematics for the laser fan control. You can see over here the Arduino part is actually pretty easy. If you are using those relay shields that you see on the left, you don't have to worry about anything, but I will explain how they work anyway. So the thing you need is, you need a ground connection for the Arduino. You also need a 5 volt connection for the Arduino to work. So basically a power supply for the Arduino. And we are connecting the 24 volt laser pin with a diode. That means that the power can only flow from the Arduino to the laser pin. Because when the laser is activated, it goes to low or zero. It is then grounded. And that means the power of the Arduino pin can flow in the direction of the laser. It is then going to low. So we can read that value from the Arduino. The only other thing we then need to do is we have to connect two pins in this case from the Arduino to the shields with a relay. So I chose to use A4 and A5, but it doesn't really matter which one of those pins you are using. And in case you're interested how the shield works over here, you put in a signal and 5 volt and ground also for power connection. And the way it works then, it's using this signal to activate a transistor. And this transistor is then letting power flow through the coil of the relay and is activating the relay. It also has two resistors here when the signal is disappearing to set that pin to low because otherwise that transistor would be floating for a while and not really activating the relay. It can store quite a bit of power until it goes to zero and then stops working. So this resistor is managing the outflow of the power. And there's also an LED just to show that the signal is active and you know that the relay is now working. And up here is one very important diode. It's a so-called flyback diode. What it does is when you activate the relay, the coil of the relay is powered. With that power, when the current is stopping flowing, then that coil would actually put out power. So the power that is stored in the coil will then be put out again in the other direction and it can destroy the transistor down here, for example. So the thing is with that flyback diode in that case that the power disappears and the coil still has stored energy, it will basically power itself for a very brief moment and the power is then disappearing. So there is no damage to the transistor down here. Other than that, you only have to worry about connecting the things you want to control with the relay to these input terminals. So the power goes in to the middle pin and then in every relay we have two states. So we have an output called NC, that means normally closed. This is always closed when the relay is not activated. That means if no power is flowing and if no signal is in the relay, then the power is flowing through this connection. That's the one we are not using. We are using the normally open, which is open as long as there is no signal. 
meaning when we activate that relay with the Arduino, the power is flowing through that connection down here. And the same goes, of course, not only for the relay used for the air, but also for the relay used for the fan. And with the relays used on that shield, you can not only put in 12 or 24 volt power, you can also use 230 volts like I'm doing with the solenoid I'm using for the airflow. So this one is 230 volt just because I didn't want to put extra stress on the power supply. So I'm just going with the 230 volt I have anyway. And the colors I used in this schematic are actually the same colors I used on the PCB that I soldered. So let's look how the software works. Just a quick recap for every one of you who've never coded for Arduino. We have these basic functions. We have the setup that is run once when the microcontroller starts and we have that loop that is basically run forever until your program crashes if it has errors or the Arduino is not powered anymore or destroyed. And one very important thing I need for the project I did is I will install a library from over here and I already prepared it. It's called Async Timer. And for those of you who have worked with Arduino before, this thing is a godsend for everything related to timing. So you don't have to compare milliseconds anymore. You just have to set a timer and then this timer is automatically doing things for you. So let's switch over to the actual code I already wrote. This here is already all of the code. We will start at the top here. We have to include that async timer that I just showed you. And we have to create a object of type timer. So this timer will then handle everything timing related for us later on. I also created two variables for the ID that that timer gives us. That means once we start a timer, we will get an ID and we can then go ahead and reset that timer every time the laser is activated. Otherwise we would start multiple timers and that would lead to uncontrolled behavior. So we have those timer IDs for the fan in the air. And I also set variables for the air pin and the fan pin. That means if we want to change that pin later on for some reason, we can do it in one central place and we don't have to remember if A4 or A5 is the fan or the air pin. It's very easy. And I wrote two functions down here. They basically do the same. We have to turn off air and turn off fan. The reason why I put this in functions is that I then can easily call that functions with the async timer that I showed you. What that function does is pretty easy. It will set the pin to low, so deactivate the relay and also reset the timer ID so that we know that we have no timer currently running. In the setup, we have to set those two pins to output pins so that we can control the relay. And we have one input pin. In my case, this is A1. This input pin is the one that is connected to the laser and we have set it as input pull up. That means internally inside of the Arduino, it will always be set to high and it will go to low if the pin is grounded. What basically is what happens when the laser is activated, the laser is set to zero, then that pin is grounded, the power is flowing off and the pin is internally recognized as low so that we know everything is running. One very important thing for the timer is we need to call timer handle in the loop endlessly. That means Every time that is called, the timer is checking for the current time of the Arduino and with that it is handling all the internal timing stuff. After that, the code is pretty easy. We are checking with the digital read function if the pin A0 is low. That means laser is activated and every time that happens, we are first checking the air assist. We check if the timer ID is set. So the way how C++ and all of the Arduino code is internally working is a zero is a zero and everything above a zero is recognized as true. That means the zero is false and we can just check for the timer ID and it is recognized as false if it is set to zero. And remember we are setting it up here to zero. That means every time the timer has run out and is stopping, we set that ID to zero so that it is recognized as zero down here any again. And also as false. That means in case we have a timer ID, we need to reset the same timer. We cannot just simply set another timer because then we would have multiple timers running and that wouldn't work out. In the else case, when the timer ID is not set, we are just setting that pin to high, meaning we activate a relay and we are then starting a timer. And in this case, this is the millisecond value back here. 
that we are setting for the timer in 2000 milliseconds basically means two seconds. It's just for testing purposes so I can demonstrate it and don't have to wait for minutes, but you can set it to any value you need. For example, my fan is running for 30 seconds and the air assist is running for five seconds. It means if the laser doing a longer traveling move, we don't need air assist. We only need air assist when the laser is starting. So I set this value generally a bit lower than the one for the fan. And the same is happening down here for the fan. We are starting it if we don't have it currently running. And if you have currently running, we just reset it and it will stay high. So the relay will still stay activated. And a good value is about 30 to 60 seconds so that the smoke can clear off. And that's basically all the code we really need. So this is a copy of this up here. And we basically have less than 20 lines of real written code because we can use that async timer library that I talked about. Now let's check out how that code behaves in reality. Now I left out the design process of the case on purpose because this one is really simple and boring. But in case you want more tips, make sure to check out my free design and print guide with the link in the description below. And also let me know what you think of this new video format since it's quite a deviation from the usual videos I do. Anyway, thanks for watching and if you want to see more you can subscribe over here and watch another one over there. See you in the next one.